When describing any x-ray, it's important to have a systematic approach to not only communicate your findings correctly, but to avoid misdiagnosis. In this video, we will cover how you should approach any orthopedic x-ray. The ABCS approach is simple and memorable. A refers to adequacy, B, bone, C, cartilage, and S, soft tissue. Adequacy. Assess the adequacy of your x-ray by ensuring that the x-ray is for the correct patient, has the correct date and time, correct sight, view, and projection, as well as ensuring that the rule of twos has been applied. The rule of twos refers to having two views and two opinions. This also includes two joints, two limbs, and two occasions when applicable. Bone. Assessing the bone is a multi-step process, approximately seven steps. These steps can be simply memorized with the following mnemonic. Some people are dangerous. Where the S and SAM refers to soft tissue involvement, the PPL in people for fracture pattern, position, and location, A for articular growth plate involvement, and the DNN in dangerous for displacement and neurovascular status. We will now look at each of these seven steps in a little more detail. Soft tissue involvement. It is important to assess the soft tissue in relation to the fracture by commenting on whether the fracture is open or closed. Open fractures are fractures that communicate with the external environment due to a breach in the skin barrier. They are an orthopedic emergency and must be referred. If the fracture is open, use the Castilla anderson classification. This classification will help you determine your antibiotic choice. There are three main types of open fractures. Type 1 fractures have a wound size that is less than 1 cm and minimal soft tissue injury. Type 2 wounds are between 1 to 10 cm with moderate soft tissue injury and contamination, whilst type 3 injuries are greater than 10 cm with extensive soft tissue injury and or contamination. Type 3 injuries can be further classified based on whether there is adequate soft tissue coverage or an associated vascular injury. Farm injuries and high energy injuries such as gunshot wounds, despite their size, are classified as type 3 open fractures. See the open fracture one page summary for a systematic approach to open fractures including antibiotic choice and initial management. Next, one describes the fracture pattern. Initially determine if the fracture is complete or incomplete. Incomplete fractures include bowing, torus, fissure, and green stick fractures. Complete fractures are further classified as simple, segmental, and comminuted. Simple fractures are transverse, oblique, and spiral fractures. Segmental fractures have two fracture lines segmenting the bone into three, and comminuted fractures have multiple fracture lines forming multiple fragments. When describing the position of the fracture, one should determine whether the fracture involves the proximal, middle, or distal portion of the bone. Alternatively or additionally, one should comment on whether there is meta, epi, or diaphysal involvement. Location. This step is simple. Just identify and name the bone. Articular involvement. Determine whether the fracture extends to involve the joint. Fractures that involve the intraarticular surface typically require surgery. This is an extraarticular fracture which does not involve the joint. This is an intraarticular fracture which does involve the joint. In children, determine if there's growth plate involvement, also known as a Salter Hallis fracture. There are five types and can be remembered using the mnemonic SALTER, S-A-L-T-R. In type 1 fractures, the S is for separated or slipped, where the fracture line extends through the growth plate. Type 2A is for above, where the fracture line extends through the physis and above the metaphysis. Type 3L is for lower, where the fracture line extends through the physis and into the epiphysis. Type 4T is for through everything, where the fracture line extends through the metaphysis, physis and epiphysis. And type 5R is for the R in crushed, where compressive force leads to the growth plate destruction and subsequent growth arrest. Displacement. Comment on the degree of displacement, if any, by using the mnemonic LATRA. It stands for length, angulation, translation, rotation, and apposition. Length. When commenting on the length, comment on whether the fracture is caused shortening, decreased length, or distraction, increased length. This is an example of fracture shortening. Angulation. Comment on the angulation by describing the distal portion relative to the proximal portion of the fracture. This is an example of posterior tilt of the distal femur. Alternatively, this can be described as apex anterior angulation. Translation. Determine if the fracture has moved on the horizontal plane, medially or laterally. This is an example of lateral translation. Rotation. Comment if there is any rotation as shown here. Apposition. Ask yourself, do the ends meet? Comment by using terms such as good apposition, partial apposition, poor apposition, or no apposition. Neurovascular status. Comment on the area's appearance, document the presence or absence of pulses, note the capillary refill time, and look for any hard or soft signs of vascular injury. Also assess motor and sensory function. Cartilage. Assess joint congruency. Subluxation is when the joint is partially intact. Dislocation is when there is no contact between the articular surfaces. 
Assess for signs of cartilage degeneration or osteoarthritis. Look for joint space narrowing, osteophysis, subchondral sclerosis, and subchondral cysts. Soft tissue. Assess on the appearance of the soft tissue by commenting on whether the skin is intact, as previously discussed, if there's any foreign bodies, the degree of swelling or the presence of crepitus, and whether there are signs of joint effusion or hemarthrosis. We have covered the ABCS approach to orthopedic or trauma x-rays. Watch the follow-up video for examples. For more videos, question banks, and one-page summaries, visit foreminamedicine.com.